Hey there, David Gordon from Theater Mania here. It is Tuesday, September 22nd. I'm here with the great John Lloyd Young, Tony winner for Jersey Boys, about to embark on his second live stream concert live from Las Vegas. Uh, and you are out west, but you're in Los Angeles. Yeah, I live in Los Angeles. And uh, so Vegas for me is uh, safe to, to do a live stream from. I can drive there. I don't have to fly. Yeah. I feel very comfortable at the place that... Uh, place we're playing is called The Space, and we, we played uh, several live shows there, you know, for audiences uh, mm -hmm. over the years, since about 2016. So, it's, you know, we're kind of veterans of that place. I feel very comfortable there, and we're able to do a skeleton crew. Everyone's socially distanced. It's, it feels like a sound stage, the actual space, so everyone can get spread out, and, you know, and they're doing their camera work. And it's, I think, uh, for a place to do a live stream of a concert without an audience. I think this is uh, ideal, this one. Before we talk about that, I do know we were just talking about uh, Los Angeles and the fires, and uh, I know yeah. you want to talk about something involved with that. Yeah, well, so it's not really involved with the fires, but this, you know, part of the world, California, we have lots of, you know, we have the drought and we have, so we have a lot of extremes, which is, I guess, what they say happens with, with global warming, right? You're going to start to have extremes. So one of the extremes that we had a few years ago was uh, a torrential rains that happened sometimes in the fall. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I had my beautiful, um, you know, hand um, calligraphy outer critic circle award for Jersey boys hanging on my wall and water came in through the ceiling onto the wall and totally melted all of the ink and oh, no. water stained it. And so I I have my awards from Jersey Boys in a very special place, but absent one of the very important ones, the Outer Critic Circle Award. And people are watching this might not know that you are the big kahuna head of the Outer Critic Circle now. I do happen to be that, and I can guarantee you that you will get a new one. It won't be you so much. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a few years now. Yeah, you know, we're not dealing with, with 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 torrential rain pour right now. We're dealing with yeah. this opposite, another element. Yeah, we don't do them hand calligraphy anymore, but you'll get a very nice certificate. And I need all of my, uh, we have a very nice like leather folder that it comes in with our logo, like embossed in gold on it. Well, all of, so yeah, all but all of these places now, it's so hard to get stuff shipped anywhere. So once yeah. the, so okay. I, well, yeah. Well, I'll hold you to it since you're yeah. the boss. Yeah. Anyway, uh, tell me about the concert and developing the concert. The concert was, so there's this famous book by Linda Obst, who's a, a, a Hollywood producer, a female Hollywood producer. And she wrote this groundbreaking book called Hello, He Lied. And mm -hmm. it was about, you know, being down in the trenches as a woman. She produced Contact with Jodie Foster, for example. Right. One of them. And uh, Sleepless in Seattle. Anyway, so one of the things she says in the book, which I think is really kind of really applies to entertainment is to, su to succeed in entertainment is ride the horse in the direction it's going. Mm -hmm. So most of my concert work has been four seasons adjacent kind of music, right. you know, 60s and stuff, because you, you become well known for a big show like that. And then people want to hear you singing songs like that. So even though I started out as a total Broadway geek and no, I could go head to head with you on Broadway history, I bet you, uh -huh. uh, with Pete Alicia or any of those, any of you guys who like write books. Yeah. I know as much as you do, I bet. I was a teaching assistant on the American musical at Brown University as an undergrad. No kidding. So, yeah. I, my, my expertise was Candor and Ebb. Uh -huh. I taught the segment on Candor Ebb. Anyway, awesome. so... So I was a real sort of Broadway baby. I worked, uh, my college internships were in Broadway production offices. In fact, I was an intern for the producers of Jersey Boys f on and off for 10 years doing odd jobs and things for them. And they didn't know my name until I was their star. Get out of town. <laughs> anyway, so I was around Broadway a lot, but yeah. Jersey Boys swept me off into... 60s and music, R&B, doo-wop, and that sort of stuff. This concert is the songs from my beginnings that got me excited about Broadway. Oh, that's and, cool. And that I haven't 
been asked to sing, you know, very much. Yeah. But because I have a Tony and that's a Broadway thing, um, I with my manager, we, we put this concert together a few years ago and debuted it at one of Michael Feinstein's clubs. Mm -hmm. And I've done it a few times around the world now. And, uh, uh, you know, for who would guess that the Jersey Boys guy would, would, you know, have a full repertoire of like classic Broadway songs at Frank Lesser, who would guess that the Jersey Boys guy would even know who Frank Lesser was, <laughs> let alone, you know, what shows he did or, he sings songs and can sing those kind of songs, you know, so. Um, so you'll be doing the entirety of The Most Happy Fella is what you're saying. <laughs> uh, no, I want to gain a little bit of jowls and weight before I play that part. But yeah, so, I'll, so you know, a lot of the songs I'm singing actually are, are songs that I could be cast in and some aren't. But, uh, you know, um, it's it's really on brand for people who love Broadway and I'm one of them. You just never would have ever guessed. You yeah. Know? Cause, yeah. Cause Jersey boys kind of sucked all the air out of the room for yeah. me and, and, and get, you know, it was the first big splash and people uh, know you the way they know you. It's not like right. they're not going to go and try to find out what else they think they, they want to, they want to think they know you from what impression they have. And if they're enjoying that impression, don't interrupt them. Yes. You know, then you're known for something that's as big as Jersey Boys. As a singer, is it uh, refreshing to sing something else for a change? Yeah, I, you know, I can sing in lots and lots of different styles and yeah. uh, and languages, and um, uh, and so whenever I get a chance to do that, I I love to do it, and you know, I can sing legit, and um, you'll hear it in this concert. You know, I did, I did, some people do know, because it was, it was pretty, it, it wasn't too long after Jersey Boys yeah. that I did uh, Les Mis at the Hollywood Bowl. Right. And that, of course, is very different singing. So, um, you know, so I did do a, a couple things that would uh, convey that yeah. over, the, over the years. But this one is, you know, right down the center, Broadway, Broadway, Broadway. What can we expect to hear? I'm sure you'll be doing Candor and Ed. No. No. You love them, no. and you're not doing Candor and Ebb. You know why I'm not doing Candor and Ebb? Because Candor and Ebb really wrote their best stuff for women. Yeah, that's true. You could give us um, actually. Yeah. I'm looking at my journal here. I always have a journal with me. Uh -huh. I'm looking at my journal because I actually was writing down and and finalizing the set list for this one. So, I'm let me open to that page, um, and I'll give you some highlights of like some. I'm, well, I won't tell you like straight on what I'll sing, yeah. but I'll tell you like from what shows maybe. So I've got a little bit of Rodgers and Hammerstein in here. Uh, I, oh, I do have some Candor and Ebb. Yeah. I lied. Well, I forgot. Yeah. They're so yeah. prolific, I forgot. Yeah. Okay, so we have a little Candor and Ebb. Meredith Wilson, uh, Rodgers and Hart, some hair. Nice. Uh, you know, obviously Jersey Boys, because can you imagine if like Patti Lapone gave a concert and didn't sing Don't Cry, Cry For Me, Argentina? <laughs> that would be mutiny. So, uh, or like Betty Buckley didn't sing Memory. Right. Always there's some Jersey Boys, but, you know. And then I'm not going to give too much more yeah. of that away, but there'll be some surprises too. And there's even a little gender switch here. Oh, there. cool. What they, what's that thing they do every year, Broadway, Broadway Backwards or something? Yeah. Is that where people sing the opposite gender? That's Broadway backwards. You're right. Actually, that's not even. You're not. That's like something that's changed in the last few years, and I need to get on board with that. Like, there's no such thing as an opposite gender anymore. Yeah, it's different genders, like all yeah. different. Yeah. What? Uh, so I apologize for that. That was not politically correct. I'm. I'm with it, you know, like I want to, I'm, I want to be woke. It's just as some things happen, you know, while I'm reading books or writing journals and things. And then I like look at something. I'm like, Oh, I guess that's changed. Okay. Well, I'll, I'm with that. Just give me some time to learn it. <laughs> what, um, what are you most looking forward to about this show? Um, the comfort of doing, uh, the comfort of doing a set that I have done a few times when it's really a tight 
rope acts where you you know where you're in front of a live audience. It's it's the scariest thing, um, and it's gone over well in those situations. So the 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 comfort of doing something that I'm I'm I know that I, I'm on top of uh, for the potential of a lot of new uh, people yeah. who would not have been able to come to some concert I did in San Francisco in a small club or or on a Playbill cruise or whatever. But so now almost anyone who wants to see this concert live can do it because they could just do it like this, like we're doing from their own home. And um, so I'm looking forward to the, um, you know, the, of course, the, the fans that watch and but also the the new exposure to people who might be curious about what does the Jersey boy know about Broadway is, you know, <laughs> You Broadway fans wouldn't necessarily know that I know about Broadway. You know, Jersey Boys is like a misfit. It's a it's a very successful Broadway show, but to Broadway purists, it doesn't count. Oh, I, I know that. these things. I know these things. I I've read. I read the chat boards, and yeah. sometimes I go and hide under the couch in the fetal position. I love that though. I saw. I remember. I have such a vivid memory of seeing it, seeing you guys do it. Whatever, two thousand six, right when you guys opened, it was great. What a great show. Yeah, I mean it's, I mean exhilarating, all over the, the world. Standard for its type of show that now, I mean after, yeah. certainly now it has legacy. It, it, that wasn't certain when we started. Yeah, one of the things I do want to talk about. What was it like to win the Tony? That wasn't what I where I was going. But what was it like like that? And what do you remember about that night? Um, it, there's you know a lot of pressure, um, uh, because I've said this before, but it's like. Imagine that you've always wanted to do a cross country trip and you're on a speeding train and there's Chicago and there's Indianapolis and there's like Omaha, although I, I love Omaha. I used to live there, but I don't think that's like on people's bucket list to, you know, cross country trip. But anyway, uh, you know, so everything that you've ever wanted to see and experience is happening, but it's going by at lightning speed. So you hardly have any time to process anything that's happening to you. It's, and you want to rise to the occasion, right? So you win a Tony Award, you want to rise to the occasion. But literally that night at 2 a.m. after the parties and everything, we were on a tour bus to the White House to perform at the White House for all the spouses of the Senate the, Senate, the next morning at like 11 a.m. So, you know, it's do the Tony Award, say hi to the people you need to say hi to, whatever, like family or friends, whatever, you know, check in with them, go off to, and you're just whisked away to something else. It's just, um, it's a treadmill. And, and so I don't think for many people who are experiencing that in a very big hit show where you're, you're at the, you're doing all this publicity, all this stuff. I don't think for many people it sinks in until afterward. Yeah. And then there are Tonys and there are Tonys. There are Tonys that you win in a season where maybe you're in a good show and a solid show and it's a good performance, but it doesn't become a phenomenon that everyone knows and or international. So if you win a Tony award for something like Michael Crawford, Phantom of the Opera, that's been running for 30 years everywhere in the world, that's a Tony award. Yeah. And then there are some that, you know, some people are Tony winners. You can't remember what, well, what did they even win it for? Right. And then they the play or whatever. And then people don't really remember, but Jersey boys is like, you know, a big brand now. So that's a good one to have. Yeah. Uh, one thing I mentioned to you that I did want to talk about, uh, Tommy DeVito, one of the original four seasons, uh, it was announced that he passed from COVID-19, uh, today, I think, or yesterday. Uh, and I want to know if you have any if he was involved uh, at all, or if he came by the the theater when you guys were working on the show, and if you. Yeah, any- I met him a few times. He came by. He brought family by. You know, it was a um, a, a nice thing for him at, at you know um, at at his age. Even then, I think he was ninety two. So you know, yeah. he, uh, he lived a long life. Uh, and, and it also put him on the map in a way that before the show, he, he wouldn't have been so much because it was right. Frankie and Molly and the Four Seasons. And who are the rest of the Four Seasons? Yeah. People wouldn't really know that unless they were real, you know, real fans. It wasn't like Ringo and John and Paul, you know. Yeah. It was yeah. Frankie Valley and then these other guys, you know. Um, so uh, Tommy DeVito really moved front and center as a real 
um, uh, uh, persona, you know, because of Jersey Boys. I have a story mm -hmm. about Tommy. You know, yeah, he, you. Was, he was a tough guy, like a, a fascinating guy. So one of the guys who is sort of tangentially mentioned in the show, I think he's mentioned once, Charlie Colello. He was actually their kind of career ranger. And, but he wasn't a character in the show, only mentioned. He came, he saw the show, and you know, I've, I've, I became friendly with him then. And, uh, and he's telling me a story where backstage we're talking after a show. And he tells me they were playing a place in New Jersey and they were they had a two nighter. So you play a club, you leave your you you play the first set that night, you leave your instruments, and you come back the next night to play the second set. And so they walk out of the of the club, much like that scene in the Jersey Boys movie where we're leaving the you know the club and you know yeah. those yeah. kind of scenes. They're all walking out, and all the all the instruments and stuff are left back in the club. They get to the van or whatever they're driving. And Tommy DeVito comes out after them and he says, okay, go back in and get your instruments. Get your, what, yeah, but we're playing here tomorrow night. Was Go get them. So they go in, they don't know why they, you know, get their instruments, put them in the van. That night the place burns down. <laughs> so, you know, these stories, you know, <laughs> there are so many of them that didn't even make it into the show. But, you know, like, so, you know, it's like those, uh, just yesterday or the day before, was the thirtieth anniversary of Goodfellas? Yeah. Another thing that you know that you might know is that Tommy DeVito is was and is you know and you know, until we just lost him friends yeah. close friends with Joe Pesci. Right. For a long time, he was actually his driver. That part uh, I didn't know. Yeah, that kind of they kind of switched because Tommy DeVito was the big shot, and then yeah. and then Joe Pesci became this worldwide famous star. Well. Uh, you know, the character that Joe Pesci plays in Goodfellas is who? Tommy DeVito. You know? yeah. Really? Yeah, that's the character's name. Uh. That's, that's and that's not an accident. Yeah. So, uh, you know, they saw some very interesting things, and that that man saw some very interesting things. Probably did some sketchy things that we wouldn't want to know about. But I'm sure he's you know wears it as a badge of wore it as a badge of honor anyway a, a deeply interesting force of nature kind of guy and uh a real a, a, a life really well lived 92 years is a nice long yeah. life you know yeah. but uh, and he left this great legacy now and 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 most of the reason that he's he's gonna have the legacy that he does where people know his name is because of jersey boys yeah John Lloyd Young, thank you for your time. We can find your concert. Uh, it's October 3rd. Tell us where we can find it online. So you can always find my concerts no matter where they are at my website, johnlloydyoung.com mm -hmm. backslash live. Um, but this one is now, now this place, The Space in Las Vegas, thespacelv.com. You can also get tickets there. And they just recently partnered with Broadway World for these live streams. Oh, so, cool. I don't know whether Broadway World's like your competitor or not, but they are, but it's I like my Theater Mania email blasts. Those are always top of my list. Oh, why thank you. And spacelv.com so we can find it there. The space. Yeah. The, the space. lv.com, but my concert johnloyoung.com backslash live and that will always be a good fail safe. We got a lot of fans on here, John, that are saying hi to you and just wanted to let you know. Oh, good. Well, good to hear. Well, it's going to be really fun. And we've done enough of these so that when I talk to the camera and there's no one there, I kind of already know what will what the reaction would be. So it's I'm going to feel like we're all together. You know, it's yeah, I think it's going to feel close to as close as possible to one of my real live concerts with people there. Yeah, good. John, be well. Thank you for your time. Yeah, you too. And I'm, I'm going to hold you to that. I'm going to hold you to that certificate. I'm, the I second, want that certificate. The second I'm able to go back to my office, you will have it a week later. Okay, because it's it's been a real hole in my yeah. in my display case. I've really, you know, I've been missing it. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to send that. you a placeholder for the time being. I'll email you a placeholder for the time being. <laughs> okay, yeah. 
Yeah, good. I'll print it out. Yeah. All right. Yeah, be well. And I'll see you in New York when it's safe to do that again. Yeah. And I thanks everybody for watching. Take care. Bye.